Good morning friends I hope everyone is doing well I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding In the last video I have discussed various data hazards such as read after write hazard write after write hazard and write after read hazard Now in this video we will discuss the solutions to avoid the three problems So first solution we will discuss is operand forwarding This operating forwarding technique is useful to solve the read after write problem. Let me write fully. It is read after write hazard. To solve the read after write hazard, we will use the operand forwarding technique. Now, what is the read after write hazard? Suppose let's take that I have a R one is equal to R two plus R three. And then some R four is equal to R one into R four. So here this R one value will be depend on this R one value. Am I right? If suppose this is instruction one and this is instruction two, how it will be executed? First R two and R three value will be performed some, and that value result value we will store it in the R one register. After this one, if I execute the instruction two, then what will happen? I have to wait for this R one. Once I get the R one value, then R one register value into register four. I will do the multiplication, and the result I will store in in R four. So if you execute these instructions using a pipeline, suppose let's take that I have five stage pipeline. Like I have instruction fetch, instruction decode. Inst operand fetch, execute, and write back. Let's take that. These are the five stages I want to use. So how it will be executed? First, instruction one will perform its all the stages like in time one, time cycle three, four, five. We will execute this. So in the clock cycle one, instruction one will perform its stage one called instruction fetch. In stage two. At the second cycle, it will execute the instruction decode, then operand fetch, execute, and then write back. So what the instruction two will do here? It will start fetching the instruction because already instruction fetch stage is executed by the instruction one. So I cannot perform the instruction fetch at by for the instruction two. So while the instruction decode is happening for the instruction one. instruction fetch stage is free so i will do it okay then instruction decode then operand forward execute and write back so now what is happening if you see that the result of r1 i will get after the write back am i right because instruction 1 will be perform its execution r1 is equal to r2 plus r3 So I will get the R one result in the right back in the R one. Okay, so that's why the problem is happening because why we are executing this operation R four is equal to R one into R four here. So what is happening? I am performing the multiplication with the old value of R one because this new updated value I will get here. but however before getting the value i am performing the multiplication of the instruction 2 so what i am doing i am not updating the value of r1 and performing the multiplication so that's why this read after write hazard is happening because of the pipeline so now how can i do it there are two solutions one is that you don't perform anything here and then wait and perform here are you able to understand because you can increase the stall cycles because why you have the write back here so you will get the r1 result here so you do the operand fetch execute and write back here am i right that is what is happening you are not performing anything here so you are introducing stall cycles if you introduce the stall cycles what will happen the performance of the pipeline will degrade because we have an object to that using a pipeline i want to make the cycles per instructions should be almost equal to 1 that is our objective in the pipeline 
But if we introduce the stall cycles means, stall cycles means in this clock cycle, we are not performing anything. If we are not performing anything, then the pipeline performance will be degraded. So to avoid that one, they have introduced the concept called operand forwarding. Now we will discuss how the operand forwarding will be executed. As we know earlier that a pipeline architecture will have a stage. Okay, stage 1, we have an input is given to the stage 1 and we have a, in between we have a registers, am I right or wrong? And then we have a stage 2, then we have a register, then we have a stage 3, then we have a register and then we have output. So let's say that I have a 3 stage pipeline is there, okay. So I have a stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. In between I have a registers okay this is one register this is another register and this is another register what is the purpose of these registers this register will store the output of the stage 1 and will be given to as an input to the stage 2 how because we are giving the input to the stage 1 so stage 1 will produce some output that output should be given to as an input to the stage 2 so before giving the as an input to the stage 2 we will store it and similarly the output of stage 2 will act as an input for the stage 3 so that output of stage 2 we are storing in a register so this is the purpose of a registers in the pipeline architecture so with the help of these registers they have introduced the concept called operand forwarding now we will discuss how it is doing as I said earlier, I am taking the five stages. So I have instruction fetch and consider that I have a register, okay. Instruction fetch, instruction decode. Between instruction fetch and instruction decode, consider that I have a register, okay. And instruction decode and opter and fetch, between both of them, I have a register, okay. And then operand forward and execute right back. So Consider that I have registers between instruction fetch and decode. There will be a register here. There will be a register here. There is a register here. There is a register here. And even there is a register here. Are you able to understand it or not? Because I am giving the five stage pipeline. So instruction one is performing its operations. Now check it. Instruction two will fetch the instruction here and it will decode the instructions here and it will operand forwarding it will be done means operand fetch will be done here and execution will be done and write back will be done and here also we have the registers in between instruction fetch and instruction decode I have a register instruction decode and operand fetch we have a register operand fetch and execute we have a registers okay now Consider one thing or not consider, check it once that R1 is equal to R2 plus R3, where I will get this result. We are saying that write back, write back what it is doing after performing the execution R1 is equal to R2 plus R3. Let's take that R2 is having value 2 and R3 is having value 3. Then during the execution phase, R1 will get the value as 5. What is the meaning of execution? We are executing the instruction. What is the instruction? It is perform the addition and assign to the R1. That is the complete instruction I1 is saying. So R1 will become 5. During the write back what you are doing in the register you are updating the value. But however you will have the R1 is equal to 5 after the execution only. Meaning is that in the register it is not modifying yet because in the register the modification will be done after the write back. But however, you have this intermediate register between the execute and write back, it will have the result. Am I right or wrong? That's what we said. The output of the execute stage will be given to the register and this register will give it as an input to the write back. Are you able to understand? Don't get confused with this general purpose registers and that registers between the stages. Okay. Are you able to understand it or not? Now you will have the register. In that register, you will have the R1 is equal to 5. Now, if you give the R1 is equal to 5 here, 
because when this one is executing r4 is equal to r1 into r4 is executing here am i right or wrong r1 is equal to r1 into r4 is executing here however you will tell that operand fetch is what you are fetching the values of r1 and r4 in this stage am i right or wrong suppose if i give the r1 value to this execution phase here then what will happen i have fetched the r1 value here the old value okay i will agree but the updated value if i get here will it be any problem no problem i will get the same solution now let's see if you have a doubt you can check it as i said earlier r1 i am getting it as a 5 okay so from here i will get the r1 is equal to 5 let's take that r4 is equal to some 4 okay then what will happen r4 is equal to r1 let's make it this as r5 to avoid the further confusion okay r5 is equal to r1 into r4 so you will get the r1 value here already during the operand fetch you got the r4 value as 4 so you will perform the multiplication and the result will be stored in r5 are you able to during the op i will agree during the operand fetch you have taken the r1 value old value but however before performing the execution if this register gives this value whatever the result value it is happening then you will get the correct result so this concept we will call it as a operand forwarding because you are forwarding the operand value to the next instruction so i hope you have understood what is an operand forwarding and how it eliminates the read after write hazard okay so in the next video we will discuss about the next two hazards what are the two hazards are there one is the write after read hazard and we have write after write hazard so we will discuss little bit about them and then we will go for the providing the solution called register renaming so i hope you have understood this video if you still have any doubts related to this concept feel free to ask me in the comment session i will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours thank you for watching my video have a nice day